Ready for Love Radio. This is your host and love coach Nikki Lee. And let me let me just start. I apologize. I have a sore throat. So I just want to apologize now that, that my, my voice may go in and out during this show, but we're gonna get the information out to you anyway. So <laughs> I got a flu shot and my, my throat is just not like this. now I've got one of my, my buddies back and we're gonna we're gonna have a very lively conversation this evening. I think lively works because every time we get together, we have a lively conversation. So, first of all, Christy, it is awesome to have you with me tonight. Thank you so much for having me back, Nikki. It is so wonderful to be here. Thank you to your listeners for listening. This is going to be a lot of fun. This is a subject that's near and dear to my heart for sure. And we're, we're going to talk about a couple things that are really going to be fun this evening. We're going to be a little bit more serious, and then something else is a little bit more fun. And, and then when you and I, we're probably going to go down some rabbit holes. So it, who knows? <laughs> so, it's going to get weird. Things are going to get weird. <laughs> I think they expect that from us, though, don't you? Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So, you know, there may be some people listening that don't know about you already. So... So Christy Hart, my my, and you know, you know, I don't often have guests that are from Virginia, so this is kind of cool. And and I was actually in your neighborhood about what a week ago, week and a half ago. I know now, we're just ships passing in the night. We've got to get together at some point. You know, if it hadn't been a rush trip and hadn't been a holiday weekend and bad weather moving in, we would have come to see you. So, but next time, next time I'm I'm down by the coast, we're coming to see you. That's all there is to I'm it. I'm holding you to it. I'm holding you to it. I know. I just, like I said, it was holiday weekend, and they were calling for ice up here the next day, and, and we had to get back. So we figured yeah. that was the safest thing that time. And, and considering some of the people that we met while we were down there, they would really enjoy coming to see you, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just bet. I will fill you in about them all fair. <laughs> so... <laughs> Please do. I will. I will. So do you want to tell the listeners a little about yourself? And I think if I remember right, you have a new facility for your work that you do. So oh, tell, tell I do. I'm Christy's word. Okay. Well, I'm Christy Hart. If you haven't heard about me, spank, spank. I'm the Dominatrix Life Coach, and I help you leverage tiny efforts into powerful results using the psychology of power. So this year has been excellent for, for me and for my clients, and we're all making upgrades, and I've expanded my facility to 1,500 square feet for training and all kinds of other purposes. Um, I have a beautiful little office, and we're doing filming and all sorts of stuff planned for the next year, always looking to boost our next year and take advantage of the momentum of the new year. Awesome. Well, it's, you know, it's just about the right time, so it's it's time to be thinking about that. And you know what else it's time to be thinking about, too, don't you? Oh, yes, I do. Yeah. Now, see, I was down your way Thanksgiving weekend, and mm-hmm. we're getting ready for Christmas because that's right around the corner. So, you know, last year about this time, you and I were on air with Leslie Beth, Wish, and we were talking about dysfunctional families and holiday gatherings. And, you know, sadly, when you have the holidays and you add the family in, and, and I'm sure not all families are like this. I, I haven't been around many. But usually when you add the families in the holidays, you end up with stressful situations. And oh, yeah. So, so we did a little something after, after we finished the show. I got this crazy notion, and everybody that knows me knows I get a lot of those. And I asked you and Leslie Beth, I said, what would you all think about taking the questions we talked about on air and all of us writing our answers to those and making a book out of them? And y'all agreed. So we did that. 
<laughs> so. Yeah, brilliant. I'm always fielding questions about the holidays. This is um, dysfunctional families in the holidays. I mean, who doesn't get that? Yeah, sadly, we all we all are familiar with that. And <laughs> so, so, so I I did that with with you and Elizabeth, and then I said, you know, if it's good enough to do that with them. How about we talk to a couple other people? So I, I brought in um, a couple other people I had on the show, including Todd Krieger, who I don't know if you know Todd, but he he puts out a really cool newsletter every week, and I've had him on the show. And Todd's always got really good ideas about stuff. And Susan Ball, who I've had on the show, who does a lot of great work with women about domestic violence, who's mm-hmm. got her own domestic violence story. And she she does awesome work helping helping people, especially women usually, getting out of bad situations. And then um, Reka, who does awesome work, she's fairly new in the coaching field, but she does really good work too. And all of us took the same questions, and we all gave our approach for how we would help clients with each one of those questions. And it was cool how I really enjoyed reading through everybody's answers because we all we all gave somewhat similar answers but you could tell we each have our own, had our own perspective which I really liked I like that we oh, each yeah. came from our own, our own background our own experiences and so you're going to get a little something different from every one of our answers don't you agree Absolutely. We all had different personality types, which was so funny. I mean, um, some of the people were just like, you just got to deal with it. And, you know, others of us are like, no, you don't. (laughs) You can say no. (laughs) I I think you and I were more of the, oh, no, you don't, (laughs) than anybody. (laughs) (laughs) And, and, you know, Leslie Best, you just have to deal with it. And we're like, "Uh -uh, uh-uh, no. (laughs) Yeah, no, no, you don't. No, I think in some, you know, if it's just the the very lighthearted dysfunction where, you know, where it's more akin to a funny sitcom, I think that's one thing. Then, yeah, you just got to deal with it. But there is some serious trauma with some families, and that you can sidestep. You can you can say no thank you to some any deep, deep problems over the holidays. You've got enough going on. Yeah, it, there's just times when it's like, uh, no, I just no, I'm not gonna put up with this. And unsubscribe. I, I, yeah, I, I think you and I were much more blunt in our replies to that. <laughs> <laughs> I always love reading your replies because of that. Yeah, the bluntness, absolutely. But a classy bluntness, don't you think? <laughs> oh, every time, every single time. Oh, that was so funny. But yeah, I, it was funny. By by about the fifteenth question, you could almost guess what what each of us were going to say. <laughs> it was. Oh yeah, was, I think our personalities came through in this book. I think so too. But like I said, I just I liked all the different perspectives, and I was really glad I invited Todd since we had at least one male perspective, you know, <laughs> on, the, on the whole thing. But it was yeah, I just I really. I really enjoyed the project, project, and I hadn't I hadn't done one like this in quite a while, so I really enjoyed doing that. And like I said, just getting everybody's everybody's idea, and we brought out some things in our written replies that we didn't do in the show, and there were some things in the show we didn't do in our written replies. If that right, so you had to you had to experience both to get the full story. Well, you really did, and so I actually put a link in the book. So you could go back on my website and listen to the show, too. And if you listen to the show, you get to enjoy George and his little cute comments and his, his uh-oh, <laughs> when you tell him what you do, which is, and you got to listen to it just for that as far as I'm concerned. Because so, <laughs> when, we, when we did the interview, actually, when we did the interview, we did it on Fame, didn't we? I thought we did. So it was, it was a two-hour show. It was a nice long show. Yeah, yeah that so was much fun. It was. We had we had way too much. Well, and, and George flirted with Elizabeth the whole time too, so that was fun. So, <laughs> it was fun, and, and like I said, each each one of us have our own personality. We each have our own approach to the work that we do, and and that was true of all six of us. And so yeah. maybe maybe if somebody reads through, and I did it alphabetically, I figured that way I'm not putting anybody in front of each other. I'm not making any kind of judgment on anything. Let's just do it 
alphabetically, and nobody argued. Nobody argued with me about that. So you get Christie's approach first, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then you get Leslie Beth, and then you get mine, and then you get uh, Rekha's, and then Susan's, and then Todd's. So I, I saved I saved our male perspective for last. So you've got, let me see, Dr. Leslie Beth Wish, and then you've got Christy, who is a life and business coach. You've got Reka, who is a dating and relationship coach. Susan is a women's freedom coach and self-love activist. I like that. And then Todd is a marriage and sex therapist. And then I'm a, a love and relationship coach. So you've got... You've got a wide variety of specialties in there. It just brought a nice diversity of attitudes and feedback on each one of the questions. What do you think? Yeah, and you know what I really liked was the different um, the different topics we discussed because I think everybody in the different age ranges and with different family types, we're all dealing with something different. Some of us are coming yeah. home and we're single and we're being asked why. Some of us are coming to dinner with families or additions to families and, you know, and we're interrogated about them or, or people want to give us tips on how to deal with things. And then uh, there's so much etiquette involved and then there's so many things that can go wrong in any family event. <laughs> Very true. Well, and I started out by letting each one of us kind of introduce ourselves. You know, so that you, you know a little bit about each one of us, um, what we do and how we help people, so that you're not just kind of starting cold with each one of us. In case you don't know each one of us, in the biographies in the back, I also put a link to um, the shows that each person's done with me. So that if you, if you want more information about each one of the, the coaches that was, that was featured in the book, you can learn more about each one of them too. Because I, I figure each each and every person on here I know personally, and I've he, had each one on the show before, so that way you can you can know more about them. So you want to you think I think we should share some of the questions in the book. What do you think? I love it. Let's do it. Let me see. I think first and foremost we had to start with: Do we have to deal with family around the holidays? And fascinating enough. We didn't all agree about that. <laughs> so. We did not, but I think we all come from different backgrounds, too. So, yes. you know, there are some of us that have families that are, you know, we might have our problems, but all in all, everybody means well, and maybe you're a little quirky or a little misfitish, but, um, but everybody's good-hearted. And then we have the other families. <laughs> Miss, wait a minute. What was that? I've never heard that word before. Misfitish. I probably just made it up. <laughs> just the misfit. I know some mis misfitish people. I know plenty. I am one, so. <laughs> well, there's that too. <laughs> so I, I like being misfitish. It's more fun. It is. I think it's cute. Do you have to deal with all of them? I don't think so. I, I just, I just don't think you should have to. I, I think I think you should be civil. I don't think you should be like rude and obnoxious to ev to certain people. Mm -hmm. And I think you can be civil, but um, I, I don't think you should have to, you know, spend excessive time with every certain person. Or if there's certain people that just make your life a living hell, I I just don't spend time with them. But I mean, yeah, because there really are those people. They almost delight in it. Um, I call them suburban um, sadists. Interesting. Okay. And they just kind of delight in making other people's lives miserable <laughs> in little ways. Well, some people are just unhappy, and they want everybody around them to be unhappy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I agree. And those people you don't really have to deal with. Right. Even if they're family. Yeah. Christmas present to yourself. Opt out. <laughs> Unwrap it early, folks. Unwrap it early. <laughs> so one of the other things we asked is, why are holidays with family often so challenging for people? And, you know, you'd like to think they're not going to be, but damn it, they just are. <laughs> you know? Oh, they're built that way. I mean, the, the odds are against you. Everything's set up against you at the holidays. They're stressed. You're spending a lot of money. Um, there's people coming into town. 
you're getting things ready, you're, I mean, there's so much happening. And then you want to throw family on top of that, family and stress on top of that. It's, it's just a, it's a recipe for disaster. And even the family you just really don't want to see. And, and then you've got <laughs> mom or your aunt or, or grandma saying, just be nice, just be good to everybody. And, you know, even if you've got the best intentions to be nice, somebody's going to try to just push your buttons because who knows your buttons better than your family? Seriously, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, nobody. Nobody. Exactly. You know, I wonder, did we cover... What if you're the button pusher? Oh, we didn't. We did not. <laughs> uh, yeah, we missed that. That would have been fun to talk about. about. Have you ever found yourself bringing up, you know, topics that you know you shouldn't and they just pop right out of your mouth? You know, I haven't, but I've got a friend that I can see doing that in a heartbeat. Without meaning, you know, no ill intentions, but uh, just can't resist. Yeah. Well, and sometimes you might accidentally do that because I kind of accidentally That's, do Yeah, that. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I did that about something accidentally and opened a whole can of worms. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's it. And who knows if our family is meaning to push our buttons either. Maybe we're all just stressed and, and accidentally pushing buttons left and right. <laughs> it could be. Well, and you know, sometimes too, at the holidays, you know, people insist that, that like the boyfriend has to be at the girlfriend's family's or the girlfriend has to be at the boyfriend's family's. <sighs> Like for the first time, and man, that can add a whole new stress level because you're like, I have to make a good impression, but how do I behave, and what do I do, and what do I say, and I don't know anybody here. You know, boy, that's a whole new stress level too. It really is. And then you're trying to, you know, you're trying to be fair. You, it, your relationship happiness <laughs> is involved. You've got to make sure that you're making your partner happy. Otherwise, you're going to pay for it the rest of the year until the next holiday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not good. Yeah, and that's and it's different in every family. I come from a a Hispanic um, Catholic family, and for us, you know, we always go to my parents' house, and it doesn't matter what else is going on. Um, we're at my parents' house celebrating, so anybody that's with me, um, we have to make accommodations. I always like to do both. If if you can, I like to I like to just hit everybody up and um, and call it Christmas. All right, all right. So what about Thanksgiving when they both want to like eat at the same time and say they're forty miles apart? You wear elastic pants and you do both of them. <laughs> <laughs> just just had that. And they thought that they were going to be close to each other, and they weren't. Surprise! Oh, no. Yeah. No, you can choose, but in, in my family, it's, it's kind of a, a stated thing. And I think that it's that way with, you know, some other families that are very close, that it's just not even a question. Um, you're going to have to show up. And then if you have somebody new in your life who also has, you know, family engagements planned, um, trying to work around schedules can, can be a little bit of a nightmare. Exactly. Well, and then, then you wonder what kind of impression you made, and you're not sure when you're going to find out if you made a good impression or not. It, oh. That's not, it's just not good. <laughs> so. It's not, and it's never any good asking your partner, hey, how did I do? Oh, they loved you. Sure they did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then you hear little bits and pieces for the next five months on what they really thought of you. So, yeah, that's fun. Oh, I love that. Absolutely. Yeah, it just leaks out a little bit at a time. <laughs> and you're like, they said, what? I thought they liked me. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was on my best behavior. <laughs> that's it. But they still didn't like you. Or, or they, they thought you liked so-and-so. And they're like, what? But, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> so... I like to watch um, the Christmas, the Christmas when everything goes wrong movies, like um, Christmas Vacation or the um, National Lampoon's Christmas. 
and Christmas with the Cranks. And that way you set your standards right before you even get into it. So, so that's so bad it makes you feel better about your time? It is. Yeah, it's so bad that it can make you feel better about your situation. Absolutely. Good. Just, and get your standards set at the right height, not too high. Okay, that, that's the plan. Okay, set, set your standards really low. Okay. <laughs> or your expectations really low. That's it. Yeah. <clears throat> well, at a time like that, I mean, I, I think I even wrote about it in the book. It's just, you know, get comfortable and be okay with being a hot mess during the holidays. Because there's a lot going on. To expect yourself to be, you know, to expect everything to work out great is putting a lot of pressure on a holiday. Well, and you know, no matter what you do and how much you plan, there's a whole lot of variables you can't control. You just can't. Yeah. Including can't people, control. right? <laughs> yes. Well, and, and you can't control that the sto- store is going to have everything you need. You can't control that everybody's shipping is going to be what you need, and everybody's going to be there on time. You cannot control everything. can't be done. Yeah. So, but, yeah, I remember your hot mess com- comment. You did. You did. <laughs> so, and I believe I even laughed out loud when I read it the first time. So. Oh, that's yeah. wonderful. That's a big compliment. Thank you. <laughs> I'm like, yes, she did. <laughs> so. <laughs> And we talked about common, often dreaded family behaviors. And you know what's really funny about that is is when you do take somebody with you for the first time to a family gathering and those dreaded family behaviors come out and you're like, ah, oh, crap. So. Oh, my God. You, uh, you are so right. I love the list rundown. Okay, this is my Uncle Frank. This is what you can expect from him. This is how to deal right. with it. This is what my mom's going to do. Don't let her guilt you into doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> and then I don't know if you have the rundown with new people about, you know, your family's little tics. Yep, or, or the, the little behaviors that you forgot to warn them about, and you're like, oh, no. <laughs> yep. Yep, landmine. The, the fun of family gatherings. But now, and we should we should tell the listeners the reason we're letting them know about this is that say you you haven't had a family gathering yet this year, or say you had a Thanksgiving and you were pulling your hair out. We highly suggest and recommend that you get a copy of this to read before the next family gathering you're going to have. Because oh yeah, take it with you. Leave it on the table for everybody to see, just in case somebody. <laughs> Get the itch to read during the holidays. Maybe you can help spread some some um, cheer. Yes, and and you read it before you get there. But we're we're sharing a few of the things off the top of our head that we remember that were in there. But it it is I'm not kidding. It is packed with suggestions on how to get through the holidays. And like I said, every single one of these questions, six different coaches and therapists gave you their suggestions, including the two of us on how to deal with every one of these. So if even one of these questions resonates with you, you should get this book. You should get a copy of this. And it, it is on Amazon. And what do we call this book? Because, I mean, we went round and round about what to call this. Dysfunctional Family and Holiday Gatherings. And how to be confident when the holidays get uncomfortable. And uh, honest to goodness, when are the holidays not uncomfortable? Uh, you know... <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really always something, isn't it? It's always something. But it's kind of the fun of it. I mean, the holidays really are best described as an ugly Christmas sweater. Pretty much. Pretty much. And if you look up on Amazon under Dysfunctional Family and Holiday Gatherings, you'll find it. If you look up Nikki Lee under books or Christy Hart under books, you'll find it. So lots of ways. Or, or if you go to my website, um readyforloveradio.com slash dysfunctional holidays. You'll see a link for it. So any of those ways, you will find it. It's in Kindle edition or paperback. So you can have a paperback or get this. Tell me this wasn't planning ahead. You can have it the Kindle edition on your phone in case you need to check something while you're at the family gathering. How about that, Christy? Oh, that's brilliant. I love that. I can't tell you how many times I've needed that myself. Just somebody yes. to, to take me. It's like having somebody take you aside and say, it's going to be okay. Here's the game plan. <laughs> You're like, I forgot what they told me to do. 
<laughs> on your phone. Go. This is what she told me. Okay, okay. I'm gonna try this. Because there are suggestions all the way through. Like like if you're a single parent, how to literally what can you do to get through the holidays as a single parent? And we as a single parent or a single person, both of those honestly need help. I mean, seriously. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, I was just talking with somebody yesterday about this the holiday season and how difficult it is. And even if you're not dealing with family, you're um, you're dating people who are very very interested in finding somebody to spend the holidays with, whether or not you are a good match. True, true. Well, just just to get family off their back, you know, <laughs> just to have somebody to bring home. How many movies have there been made about that? You know? Oh, yeah. And they, you know, and they're in the car kind of like cramming to learn about each other so they don't like completely <laughs> flub it up in front of family, you know? I think I, we can all relate to wanting to bring somebody home so we don't have to deal with the questions at the holidays. Right. right. Well, it just makes things easier, <laughs> you know? Oh, so, my. you know, Aunt, Aunt Josie doesn't go, haven't you found anybody yet? Because you just get so sick of hearing that, or or what happened to whoever the last person was you were dating, or you know any any of those questions that you're just so sick and tired of hearing about. Oh yeah, and then you know if you're a serial monogamous, who are we going to have in our Christmas picture this year? <laughs> you, know, I, you know, well, and I'd like to, and I think this was one that we we did that that Elizabeth was was very helpful on was what you can do to get through the holidays as step parents that's really really helpful because there's so many families that have stepchildren and that's a whole new dimension especially the first holiday when when you've got stepchildren that you're bringing into and they're meeting your family for the first time there were some fantastic tips in there she really did a great job. There are a lot of unknowns when it comes to um, step families, absolutely. And during the holidays, it's such a big time for the kids and for families, and you're blending families, and you're blending personalities, and you're blending problems. Right. Well, and, and especially with, with kids, you, you want them to feel welcome, you know, and you're, you don't yeah. necessarily know how your family members are going to treat them. And I, I remember, um, there were suggestions, you know, to, to get an ally lined up ahead of time to make sure that they're going to help them to feel welcome. You know, introduce them to, to some of the kids in the family ahead of time so they're not just walking in the door and not know anybody. You know, just, yeah. just simple things you can do ahead of time so it, it's not such like a shock to the system when they walk in the door for the, for the first time. So it's it's so many things like that that... You may not think about it until you get ready to walk in the door. You know, you, you might not even think about that until you pull up and all of a sudden you're like, oh, no. You know, all these kind of things we included in the book to help so that we can take some of the stress out of the holidays for you. I, I'm thrilled with the way the book turned out. I really, really I like. love it. I love it. Um, there's some of my best advice in there. And then um, just the other contributors to the book, they just had such incredible insights and in coming from all the different perspectives, from people with families and people who came in single. And people, um, and then we're all coaching um, specific p types of people. So we all have different perspectives on what the holidays will look like. Right, right. Well, and I think even, even those of us that didn't have kids still have kids that we care about and could give perspectives, you know, um, so like I said, even if we aren't parents, we can still get some insights on things that we'd want to do to welcome. Because, I mean, I, I know even not having children, still when I'm in a situation, I want to do things. If there, if there are new children in the, in the group, I want to do things to welcome them in and bring them into the group and make them feel like they're part, part, of, the, you know, part of the family or whatever. So there's, there's just such a I, – I think that will help to give you – some additional ideas of people that can be an ally and that can help you in the situation where you might just be thinking, what, what other parent is there that can help me? There may be other people that can help you in this situation you might not have thought of automatically. 
Oh, so yeah, like the other kids. Like, especially if you're bringing a kid into the family, get the other kids involved and say, hey, he's, he's not going to feel comfortable. Help him feel welcome here. Well, and, and I know when I was I mentioned, you know, the introducing him ahead of time, and the first thing Leslie Beth says, well, what if you're too far away and you can't? I'm like, Skype, you know, Facebook Live, you know, do one of those kind of things to introduce them ahead of time. They don't have to meet face to face. Just do something so that they've they've met in some way. Kids, kids don't have to meet face to face, you know. <laughs> a lot of ways you can introduce them so that when they do meet face to face at dinner they're at least going to ha already have some kind of a connection so that it won't be just meeting them cold kind of thing. So. Yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah, because there's nothing more awkward than just being brought into a new family and kind of dumped there at the table. And yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, and, and you've got all the cousins and all that kind of thing that already know each other and have known each other for years, and then you're like, you know, you're, you're the odd man out kind of thing. So you want to you yeah, avoid... Yeah, you don't want any kid to feel like that, no. Yeah. Well, and you know, you... The, the kids might all enjoy the same video games, and they might enjoy some other something all alike, and it's real easy to find out that kind of thing ahead of time, so they have something to talk about. It um, is, and I love board games for that. And the kids really, just, their, their personalities really start to, start to come out. They loosen up really quick after they're, you know, playing games. Games are a great way to, for everybody to get along and to, and to really shine. Definitely. Well, we talked, too, about... Um, uh, newly divorced individuals, you know, and, and mm. like like you don't have enough stress in your life already, right? Oh, then, that's one of the worst way to enter the holiday is newly single. Oh. Yeah, well, whether whether you're you know you've just broken up with somebody, you know, dating or or divorced or that kind of thing, you know, and so we we talked about that in several different ways, you know, how can how can you help the, the divorced person and how can you help the children if their parents have just recently divorced? Mm. You know, so, you know, and I, and I like, there were quite a few different questions that we included in here about how to help the children of the various family members in different situations. Um, so it's not just, we didn't focus on just the adults. We were also focusing on the entire family, uh, people that would be coming in. Yeah, that was a really great aspect to the book, absolutely, that we were just, we had so many, because every family is different. We all have different dynamics. We have different numbers in our families. Some of these are small gatherings, and some of them are huge, and there are a lot of people. Um, yeah. And it was just a lot of fun to see all of the different perspectives from all, all of us coming from a different place. <laughs> this, this is one I think you and I had way too much fun with. <laughs> You're going to like this. How do you handle family members getting offended because you don't want to celebrate with them? No, my, uh, you know, my general response is the offense lies with the offended. Um, yeah. it, whatever you come at with good intentions, positive intentions, if it offends somebody, then they were, you know, they were kind of looking for an offense because you certainly didn't mean it. If they read one into it, um, right. we, we can help them work through it but it isn't your responsibility to deal with that. Right. As long as you, you know, you weren't, like, cruel about it. In, 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 right. In, that's, that's a different situation, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Um, no, but some people walk around perpetually offended <laughs> at what others do or say. And, um, and for those people, you know, just be polite and, and walk away. <laughs> Is my right. motto. Um, but if you really care about them and their family members and their distress, we can help them work through it. Um, right. But that doesn't mean that you need to be thrown under the bus either. Exactly. Well, and we, we tackled, too, um, people that are feeling lonely at holiday time mm. because that can be a really big situation for a lot of people. And they can, they can be feeling lonely for a lot of different reasons. Um, so we, we tackled that. Um, I think, too... Didn't we talk about if people are depressed? Yeah, you're very depressed at holiday time. I don't know what to do about it. We we talked about that. So, you know, and that's those two things are big for so many people during the holidays. So to make sure that we included those two issues for people. Oh yeah, I mean the holidays can get dark. It's especially when you're alone and you're looking at all these families together, or you're watching movies and 
you know, movies aren't about people spending the holidays alone, typically. They're about family members spending the holidays together. They are. Well, yeah. this, this is another one you and I had too much fun with. How do you handle negative, meddlesome family members? And I, uh, come on, who, who listening doesn't have meddlesome family members that they deal with at the holidays? So we, we all give you some interesting suggestions on how you can deal with your meddlesome family members during those times. Yeah, and some of them even mean well. They're just, you know, they have a negative slant to life, and then they want to, they basically want to be all up in your business about whatever it is you're doing. <laughs> all up in your business, boy. <clears throat> all up in your business. But, yeah, but there are ways to handle them. We've listed them in the books, and, and it, doesn't have to, it doesn't have to turn into a confrontation, and it doesn't have to get very dramatic. Um, nobody needs to bring the drama. We can, um, we can relax and just enjoy the negativity of those meddlesome family members. I'm not sure if I put um, the technique about the, um, the holiday bingo where, you know, where you say, okay, you know, Aunt Patricia is going to yell about politics and <laughs> and Uncle Larry is going to get drunk and <laughs> and just create a game out of it because we all know, you know, there are certain things that are just going to happen. Somebody's going to get negative. Somebody's going to get meddlesome. And if we expect it and welcome it in a fun sort of way, we can actually change how we feel during the holidays and how the family reacts to those things during the holidays. That's right. Now, here, here's one I'm going to give you that, that can be very, very touchy with your significant other. Mm. Mm okay? What if okay. your family doesn't like or decides they refuse to include your significant other during the holidays? Have you ever had that happen to you? <laughs> my family has never, ever, ever, ever approved of anybody I've ever dated. When I, oh, so you have never had the opposite, okay. <laughs> when, when I've ever been willing to tell them when I was dating someone, which I usually don't tell them for that very purpose because I don't want to hear it. <laughs> so. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, I think we've all had that experience where we bring somebody home, we're crazy about them, and our family is just, no, no. <laughs> not having it, not into them. But, you know, I did get revenge when my dad got remarried because I don't like her, so, you know. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> so how do you act toward her during the holidays? Don't have to deal with it. <laughs> there we go. Number one, question number one. <laughs> uh, you know, you ask. <laughs> yeah, no, the answers really are in the book. Question number one, you do not have to deal with people you don't want to during the holiday. <laughs> I thought I was clear about that. <laughs> yeah, we, we absolutely were. I mean, we're polite. Yeah, we don't have to bring confrontation to every single uh, holiday gathering, but we can certainly just relax and, um, and, and go our separate ways if we need to during the holidays especially when it gets too stressful or somebody brings too much drama. Exactly. So what about when you can't afford to buy everybody a gift, but you still want to make sure they know that you care about them? Who hasn't faced that problem? Because, you know, when, when you've got three or four brothers and sisters and they, for some reason, have five or six kids apiece, that gets stinking expensive. How do you deal with that? It really, really does. My family is doing, um, we're doing a gift exchange this year for the adults. The kids can all get gifts from the adults, but the adults, we're just basically trading bad gifts. <laughs> there you go. You know, because as you get older, you can't keep up with what everybody wants. So, you know, you're just kind of buying things for people that now they have to keep around because they feel guilty until the next Christmas when hopefully they can re-gift it to somebody else. Oh, I don't remember that. Didn't that look like, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we just write, you know, my family, we're very practical though. So we'll just take index cards, we'll write our name on top of it, write down a list of five things that we want that are of a certain budget, and then we'll put them all in a pot and we'll draw the names, and we'll draw a name for each adult. And that's how we, that's how we you know, that's how we gift exchange for the adults. Right. Interesting. I like that. 
and don't be afraid to make things. I think we, you know, we lost the the kind of artisticness of when we used to make our own cards and make our own things. And that can be a fun way to spend the holidays too. Yeah, totally agree. Well, I, I don't know. I just think I think it should be more about being together and and showing you love one another in other ways instead of just buying things for people. But that's just me. So that is what they say the holiday spirit is about. But tell Hallmark that. I know, I know. <laughs> I, 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 I will, I will actually get myself in trouble. But I, I will tell you my gift giving approach. My I gift giving approach is when I actually see something that reminds me or makes me think of somebody, and no matter what day of the year it is, whether it, I mean, it, I, I just, I don't care what day of the year it is. If, if it speaks to me and reminds me of that person, and I'm like, you know. This is perfect for so and so. That's when I buy a gift for somebody. And those are the most thoughtful ones. Those yep. really are the most thoughtful way to give a gift. Well, and then there's yep. the five love languages. So if exactly. if somebody likes acts of services, you know, a little gift certificate to do something nice for them, that never yep. hurt. We definitely do those exchanges at my family's gatherings too. Yep. See, there's there's so many different ways to quote unquote give gifts for people you care about. Hallmark does not agree with us on that though. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> they will not be sponsoring us on our book. That's okay. I didn't think they were going to <laughs> they were not on my list of potential sponsors, I can tell you. So. <laughs> don't say they don't my content. <laughs> so. Oh my God, that's it. That is it. Exactly. So my favorite one was the the um, why am I still being treated like a child whenever I go back home? Have you um, ever had that experience? I did, and I love that. But it's so true. Every time, every time you're around family, they treat you like you're ten years old, and it is. So and have you ever found yourself backtracking and <laughs> and feeling like you're ten years old? Yes, that is so irritating too. And you're like. And then you walk out your door and like, what in the world? <laughs> <laughs> and you and you stomp upstairs and slam the door. <laughs> <to their room. laughs> like you're ten years old, yeah. <laughs> uh, exactly. I, I, I yeah, family has a way of doing that to us. They they it's almost like stepping into a time machine. Um, you have these dynamics that sometimes don't get changed, even though everything else in your life changes. Sometimes that family dynamic of who's in charge or what personality types conflict with other ones, they just come back to haunt you, only during the holidays, right? Right. But it will. It'll, it's, it's something about being around family. It's, it's crazy. It's, it's wow. How about, how about this one? And. This, I bet you everybody wonders this, and they probably don't voice it, but they wonder. Is it possible to have a relaxed holiday, and if so, how? Is it possible? Now, I, I think it's difficult, but not impossible. But you just have to let go of, your, of any kind of standards and, and let go of the idea of a perfect Christmas and especially let go of we're gonna of um, of any of those holiday lifetime original movies because that's just not that's just not gonna be happening. <laughs> I think I think every woman that thinks she has to outdo what she did last year and oh it's gonna be perfect needs to let go of those expectations and say, you know what? Something is not gonna be perfect, but it's okay. Yeah, the perfectionist jar. You got to put a dollar in every time you're being a perfectionist. Yep, and if somebody in the family wants to complain, I'm going to look at them and say, "Well, you know what? You can host next year and move on." Mm -mm. Well, and that's a big deal. Um, a lot of families, as they're growing older and people are passing away, and the people that used to host the holidays are no longer either able to host the holidays or they're just not willing anymore because it's a lot of work. How does your family handle that? One side of the family doesn't get together at all in any way anymore, and really hasn't since my grandfather died. It just hasn't been the same since he's been gone, and that's been years. Um, and then after my grandmother died, there's just absolutely nothing. Nobody gets together anymore. The others, Yeah, it's like we've almost forgotten how to host, right? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. And then the other side, um, anything that is done but is done by one aunt. I mean, she oh. she's the most. But yeah, that's that's pretty much how anything is done at this point. <clears throat> Yeah, and it's the same with a lot of the families that I'm seeing is that um, there's either one person who will pick up the torch and, right. and carry the holidays, or it just everybody else is just happy to let it fall away. Well, and that's, that's like with my one aunt, and, and that's, it, it, that's basically just reunions. You know, once a year she gets everybody together, and she, she promised my grandmother, because my grandmother died about three years ago, and she promised her that she would continue to get, she says, I, I'm not going to promise they're all going to be there. She says, but I, I do promise that I'll get everybody. I will plan a day, and I will invite everybody, and whoever shows up, shows up. Oh. You know? So she says, I'll, to the best of my ability, I'll get them all together. But if, if they can't make it, I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to drive myself crazy because you, you just can't. Yeah. You know. But, um, but yeah, that's – but like I said, the other family, pretty much since my grandfather died, it just it hasn't been the same at all. And that's been. I think we're seeing that in a lot of our families, where you know the the big family gatherings sort of fall away, especially as as the siblings start having their own children and their own families. Yeah. And it becomes more inconvenient for everybody to convene on one day. Well, you know, what I hear people talk too. Even even if you do get a family group together, everybody's on their cell phones or their tablets. <laughs> They're not together anyway. Seriously, they're they're not spending the time interacting. I mean, we we used to sit. I'm okay, okay. Like one side of the family, we used to all we'd be at a couple different tables, like playing cards. I mean, that's what you do on my dad's side of the family. You you as soon as you can sit up to the table, you play bridge. That's just what you do, you know. But I, I, people don't do that kind of stuff anymore. <clears throat> You know, everybody yeah, gets- it's become more and more difficult. I think the adults are a little bit more open to it. I know in my family we like to sit around and tell stories, but um, but the kids, they they're just on their phone. I don't. Nobody even knows what they're doing. What are they doing? They're inventing something. I don't know. They have so many apps now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, that is they've, they've got their earbud in listening to something on YouTube. I mean, who knows? You know, but it's just yeah. yeah it's- just totally not. We're competing with the, we're competing with um, YouTube and professional entertainers for our families. It's very difficult <laughs> to keep the kids' attention. Sometimes you see ads, and, and the kids walk in the door, and they immediately ask for the password for the Wi-Fi. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I mean, maybe you should have them earn it by doing some dishes or uh, or helping with the dinner. Like it? Yes, earn the Wi-Fi password. That's a good idea. <laughs> That's it. Earn the Wi-Fi password. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's so funny that, it, you know, it used to be that it was the adult's attention who was a commodity, right? It was the kids trying to get the adult's attention. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. And now it's the adults trying to get the kids' attention. Well, if you can even get the kids there, you know, so... Huh. But hopefully it's not like that in all families. Um, we definitely put our, during dinner, um, there are no cell phones allowed. Right. So do you have a rules like that at your family? I haven't really noticed that it's an issue. Um, well, now, <laughs> at the end, <laughs> at least when, when we're at their camp, you're so far out there's no signal. So that's, that's kind of a non-issue. Um, oh, that's nice. Oh, yeah. It, it's out in the boonies. Um, I mean, the only thing you, you got a signal out there for is a deer. Um, <laughs> seriously. Um, in town, I haven't really noticed this, that it's an issue. I mean, everybody sits sits around the tables, and we, I mean, we all talk. So it's not really an issue, which is nice, you know, because you get to catch up with everybody. So, yeah, it has that really is. Like I said, when when we're out at the camp, you, you don't have cell phone signal for like thirty miles, so no problem. <laughs> so. Maybe that's how we have to start doing it: is is get everybody up to the mountains or or somewhere where they can't access their cell phone. That's right. We really take the kids off, right? Yeah, no kidding. What? Yeah, but we covered a lot of really great questions because um, I think we all want to have a good holiday. It's just that there are so many obstacles in the way of that. 
There is. Well, you know, one of them too is is I've been cut off from the family for a while. So how do I reconnect? You know, and there yeah. are people that for various reasons have just not connected with the family, and it is so hard to make that first move to to get back. You know, to to say I I want I want to come to to dinner with the family. I want to be part of the family again because. You know, there's a whole lot of reasons. If if you've been disconnected, there's usually a yeah. really, really good reason why. You know, so there is. It, it's hard to reconnect again. So I mean, it we, is, and even to be on the opposite end of that and have somebody want to reconnect that has maybe caused problems in the past with the family. Right. Right. So I I'm hoping the listeners got a feel for the fact that we covered a lot of. Some of them are simpler questions. Some may be kind of funny, humorous kind of questions. But I think we, we tackled a lot of serious topics in the book. You know, a lot of things that, some things you might not even want to face when you think about, you know, getting together with your family and that kind of thing. But I I really I really felt good about the questions that we included in here. And I felt really, really good about the answers that we shared. Because like, like we said several times, there was such... A variety and diversity to the answers that we shared in here for people. I think we're going to be able to um, reach so many different people with things that'll help them um, through through the different perspectives we share. What do you think? Yeah, and through what can be a tough time. And really, I think for me, it was about putting people in a position of confidence before they even walk into it. Because uh, some people start, you know, they enter the family gathering just with a pure sense of doom. Um, <laughs> this is going to be bad. This is going to get ugly. And they just walk into it knowing that. But I think, you know, having some of these tools at your ready disposal to use, I think that allows you to enter even the toughest situations with a bit of confidence knowing you have six coaches and therapists behind you with, with um, answers that have been tested and actually work to deal yeah. with family in the holidays. Very true. Very true. Like I, I rounded up six really good people with a whole lot of training and a whole lot of experience. And uh, so I was really happy with the stuff we came up with. But yeah, was, and I, I think it was great that these were real answers. They're not... You know, if you, you know, they're not Dear Abby answers where you, you wouldn't say that to somebody or you wouldn't, you're not the type of person to do that. These are, these are answers that real people can use, that everybody can use on it, you know, every day. These aren't going to sound like they're not coming from somebody, um, from a normal everyday person, you know. Some of those answers where they script things just, uh, they sound a little too political or, well, yeah, or rehearsed. I don't remember any that I read through it. I'm like, oh, please, you know. Yeah. It was, it was stuff that, that made, I mean, it may not have been my perspective or the way I would have handled it, but it was like, okay, I can see how that could work kind of thing, you know. Mm -hmm. But it Yeah, and of course, you know, everybody's family is different, and some answers are going to work for some families, and some, you know, some are not. But I think, you know, your, our readers are definitely going to know the difference. They're going to know what works for their family and what doesn't. This isn't, a, this isn't a primer book. We, you know, everybody's intelligent and they can put their own spin on it. But we definitely just wanted to, to give you some tools that could help you and some different ideas because we put a lot of thought into this to make it easier for you. So you don't have to put as much thought into that and you can put all the thought into putting the family gathering together and we'll handle, we'll handle the drama. <laughs> and, and help you minimize the drop. Well, yeah. Yeah. Too, when we put all this together, um, we, I mean, we, I know you and I spent like hours <laughs> on these questions coming up with our, our responses to them. And then, you know, putting them all together into the book and compiling everything and, and making sure. So basically, when you, when you open the book, well, open the book or, or open your Kindle, whichever, depending on which version you get of it. You, you basically, you see the question, and then you're going to see Christy's answer, and then you'll see uh, Elizabeth's answer, and then you'll see my answer, and, and so on. So you're basically seeing the one question, and then each one of the, the replies down the page. So you basically can see everybody's thoughts right there in a row, and just kind of see which 
which perspective or or even little pieces of everybody's perspective because you might get a little bit from her and a little bit from me and a little bit a little bit from from Todd you know and, and just see what works I didn't want to limit anybody's anybody's contribution because you never know what's going to work for you when you look at something like this so there's there's just there's a lot to use a whole lot to use in here yeah, I agree. I just I loved all those different perspectives and it's great. Plus, you know, we have so many different types of questions for different types of situations that, you know, you can find your questions and this can be this can be a really simple read for you just getting the answers to the questions that you need or this can be an entertaining read for you and go through all of it and see what everybody deals with over Christmas and how to handle it. Well, you know, and actually that's a good point because it can help you to get empathy for other people. Even if you're not dealing with something in, in, you know, personally, we talk a lot about if you're going into a situation having an ally you know, to help you in various situations, you may, as you read through, find ways that you can help other people in your family. You know, If there's certain people in your family, say, say there's someone in your family that's recently going through a divorce and has kids, reading through the book, you may find ways that you can help them. So there's, there's just a, a wealth of information that I think could help families in so many different ways. And actually, I was just looking on the Amazon page. It's, what, 100 and, about 123 pages. And like I said, what I did is, is we started out with each one of us kind of introducing ourselves, telling you what we do and how we help people through our practices. And then all the questions, and there's over 20, if I remember right, 25, 30, somewhere in that ballpark. And then at the very end, I included um, a bio page for each one of us that tells you about our credentials, our experience, what we do, a link to our websites for more info if you want details, and like I said, a link to the individual uh, radio shows that I did with each one of the people. Um, so plenty, plenty of credibility building if you want more information to make sure we really know what we're talking about. <laughs> you know? But I, I'm really, really happy, and I just wanted to make sure that, that we were letting the, reader, the listeners know that that we do have this resource, we put it together, and just, is this is a big time of year for this information. So Dysfunctional Family and Holiday Gatherings um, on Amazon and available on Kindle and in paperback. And I've got to give a shout out to Christy for putting together the beautiful cover for us. So Christy, thank oh, you. Oh, I appreciate that. Oh, it was great to be a part of this project. I appreciate you including me. And, um, yeah, dysfunctional family and holiday gatherings. How to be comfortable when the holidays get uncomfortable. I think that's the perfect way to put it. That is, that is, that is wonderful. And I think that the readers are going to get a lot of value out of this and hopefully have a better holiday because of it. We were focusing mainly on the holidays here, but, I mean, even reunions. Any, anytime you get together with family, you're, you're going to have these kind of situations. So you can use these all throughout the year if you need to. But... Listeners, I'm going to go get some hot tea. And listeners, I hope you got some good information. And please, please think about checking out the book. I think you get some great information. And the whole whole idea was to help to take some of the stress out of the holidays for you. So I hope you can take a look at that and see how we can help you to have a less stressful um, time with your family. Because family, family should not be stressful. So uh, thanks a lot for being with me. I appreciate it very, very much. Thank you for having me on, and thank you to the listeners for listening, and I wish you all a very happy, happy holiday with your family, and I hope that you were able to share all of the love and joy that this season was meant for. Awesome. Awesome. I like that. That is a great way to wrap things up. And listeners, I'll be with you next time on Ready for Love Radio.